Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today I would like to share with you guys my final thoughts on the Tactile Knife Co. Bayer. Now, I hope that that is the proper pronunciation because on my unboxing I was calling it the Bexer and obviously I am a illiterate buffoon. So, with that out of the way now, this is a slip joint knife that is made fully in the US by, I mean, I wouldn't say a relatively new new company, but it's new to me. This is the only example of this brand that I've ever experienced. Um, I do want to check out more stuff. It's just it's a little, a little expensive, right? The slip joint, $200. It's a good chunk of money for, uh, for something like this. But there are a lot of extremely impressive things about this. And a couple little things that I have issues with as well. I did not purchase this knife. Um, I got it in a trade. I traded a knife and uh, now I got this one. So it was kind of like a what the hell moment. Why not? Uh, let's go for it. And I was able to experience it and now I want to share my thoughts with you guys. So I'm going to be pulling specs off of Blade HQ because I trust them for the most part when it comes to specs, measurements, weight, things like that. The overall length is six and three quarters blade length is 2.875 so this is a wonderful little knife to take across the pond to uh, the uk europe any other part of europe because it is non-locking which is pretty cool um very modern traditional right in the blade shape the way that you interact with the knife um and it's under the you know legal limit for most places which is about three inches or so uh blade material that they're using cpm magna cut which is pretty freaking schmancy that's pretty cool uh the blade style is a clip point and yeah definitely that is a that is definitely a clip point so pretty cool pretty unique looking and actually performs quite well very pokey pokey that's for sure stone wash on all of it and it is done very well executed super consistently i do definitely like that uh the edge type this is plain so there's no serrations imagine seeing serrations on something like this that would be just absolutely wild it wouldn't be anywhere near me that's for sure <laughs> um what else handle materials are titanium and there are liners no wait hold on no, it wasn't a liner. It was just a, just this back piece. So just like little little slabs of titanium, and a little back piece, which is the spring essentially. Oh, well, sorry about that. A little bit of confusion. Uh, and the weight is one point eight four ounces. We can go ahead and just verify that for fun. Got a little scale here. Yeah, there you go. Not too bad. This thing is uh, an absolute featherweight. You're not going to feel it. Um, now, this is something that's meant to be carried in a little slip. So the slip, whether it's leather or canvas or what have you, whatever you, you know, drop this into, um, it can add a little bit of weight, of course, right? It also comes with this little lanyard, which I forgot to put back on when I reassembled the knife. So that's my fault. Uh, so there's that, just a little paracord, not the stretchy stuff, and it just has this little plastic, possibly colored Ultim. Uh, no, not Ultim, I forget the other material. Uh, we're just going to call it plastic. Yeah, a little plastic bead there. Made in the U.S., and it says opening method, thumb studs. Yeah, that's uh, some pretty cool thumb studs there. That's that's nice, yeah. Like, <laughs> obviously a little little error there, not a big deal. Um, it says that this is running on washers, and yes, there are these tiny, tiny little washers. Uh, brand Tactile Nafco, model Bayer, made in the US, and is meant to be used as an everyday carry knife. Now, I will say, this is most definitely not an everyday carry knife, unless, of course, you live in Europe, and this is really your only option. You could very well carry this uh, day to day, but for the most part, I think you're better off with something a little bit more modern, um, simple little, you know, budget liner lock or something with an axis or like maybe with a shark lock or ball cage locker, you know, something 
something a little bit nicer. But besides all that, there are a lot of things about this that I do definitely enjoy, and we'll get to them in a second. I just want to do some size comparisons, make sure this is nice and centered. There we go. All right, let's get some stuff out. Everything here is going to be essentially monstrous in comparison. Let's do the Spyderco's first. This is the Spyderco PM2. Here we have the Native 5. My take on a modern traditional, if anything. <laughs> so definitely a huge difference between those. Let's do Benchmade Bug Out. This is the F5.5. Got two more left here. Demco AD20.5. Last but not least, the Wii Praxis. So yeah, again, all these knives are uh, behemoths in comparison. And that's fine. I actually really do enjoy uh, smaller knives or more compact knives because having something like this in my place of work is absolute overkill but it is quite nice every once in a while getting a cool reaction out of somebody especially if if you're using it around somebody who knows that you're a crackheaded you know knife guy um it's always nice because they're like oh what are you carrying today it's like oh well, i got this freaking pocket sword and yeah, I know the Espada XL people out there like, oh, <laughs> that's not a knife. This is a knife. I am sure it is. But uh, for one day at work, this was actually my secondary carry. And if I was waiting in my car or doing something, I was constantly just doing this because this is probably one of my favorite things about this knife. Now, if you guys watch my unboxing of this, this action was very poor in comparison to what it is now. I took this apart. I soaked it in some acetone just to clean it up. Um, tuned it. Very easy to reassemble. Disassembly, not so much. Uh, this is constructed stupidly tight. Like very, very ridiculously tight tolerances on this to get it just right for everything to snap back in place. And yeah, not fall back in place, snap back in place. Like, I had practically had to use pliers to get this thing back together. Reason being, and one of really the only legitimate issues that I had with this knife, was that the little pins, there is a pin back here, a steel pin, that is used to hold in the little, uh, little lanyard piece, right? That was completely rusted out. Um, so I had to clean it, kind of scrub it a little bit. There's also a pin holding in a small portion of the back itself. Um, that was also rusted and kind of just like corroded over the the rest of it. So it was it took a little while to pick at it and clean it out and eventually be able to dismantle the knife. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, I uh, ran into some some little issues like that when it came to this thing being, you know, actually like taken apart and cleaned. But the mushiness that was like right around here, it's gone now. Like, check that out. You hear that? It is so clean and so satisfying. And every stop, or well, the half stop, there's no like mid stop. It's just super, super clean. Now I can definitely see how this could be uh, kind of gunked up as tight as it is within the pivot area. I could definitely see how just the slightest little bit of pocket lint or debris, dust and stuff like that could definitely uh, mess with the action. But with this thing being the way that it is, it's not something that's going to be carried a lot. So that's why I disagree with uh, Blade HQ's title of calling this an everyday carry knife because it's not. This is meant to be carried in a little slip whether it has a pocket or not. It's going to be a pocket dropper or a slip with a pocket clip. Not a big deal. Whatever you want to do with it. I haven't purchased one with it because honestly I what I'm planning to do with this is I'm going to modify the crap out of it, put a sick edge on it, and then just sell it. So it's going to be heavily discounted from the original price. Um, 
is probably going to be around like 150 so if you guys want a fully customized bear 150 on the half sale i don't know when and i apologize but that's the goal with this i need money give me money so i can buy more stuff to review <laughs> uh, a couple other things about this and again the whole issue with the little rusted pins that was a really easy fix i just had to go and kind of take the pieces to the sink and just scrub it lightly with a brush and i was able to knock off like 80 percent of the debris but this still needs to be mentioned that honestly tactile and um you guys probably aren't watching but it is important to note that these should probably be if they are steel should be a stainless steel or something that just is very corrosive resistant because obviously these are not corrosive resistant these look so easily corrosive you can just kind of like breathe a breath on them and they'll probably corrode so that's not great at all seeing as um you know this knife is very difficult to to take apart reassembly i mean it's eh, it kind of goes both ways but i'm sure if this was taken apart every once in a while to clean properly it would just become easier and easier um after disassembly to get it perfectly centered for how thin it is i mean this thing is perfect it is absolutely perfect so that's a plus as well it's not rubbing up on either side there i kid you not is basically a printer paper less than a printer paper's thickness between either side there's a little tiny tiny little bit of wiggle there but it's nothing crazy it holds itself nice and centered and i think that that is a beautiful little thing there uh, the pivot is captured, a little flat spot right there. I think it looks a little weird, but how else really could they have done it? So it's so minimal, you can barely even tell, but it is captured, which makes this, uh, you know, that much more easier to take apart. Also, this is going to fall into my category of potentially a perfect knife because you can disassemble the whole thing with one bit being a T8 Torx bit, which is sick. I do definitely enjoy that. I hate having to switch out my bits. I don't like the concept of companies forcing you to essentially like buy multiple ways of disassembling a knife. Like for the average person, the average knife person, you really only need like one or two bits maybe. And I do have two bits, but my favorite one to use is the little stubby one because you can get a pretty good purchase on it. And I'm glad that, you know, I had that one because I had to put a... Uh, considerable amount of force behind actually like breaking the tension um, of you know the hardware and just to get this thing apart but uh, overall I will say that the way that this thing is constructed it is extremely extremely wonderful I do definitely uh, see where some of the pricing comes from I don't think that this is an overpriced item um because there is a lot going on here you have ridiculously thin blade stock a full flat grind with a beautiful consistent finish the lettering here tactile super clean nothing on the other side there isn't even a blade steel stamp which i don't care it doesn't really matter um also the material that they're using cpm magna cut that's sweet um, the way that they did the sharpening trial and plunge grind, there is so much life to this. And this actually has its factory edge still. The original owner of this didn't really use it, honestly. Um, and the time that, that I've had it, I've probably put it through the most use. The edge is not dull, dull. It's not hair shaving sharp anymore. But um, after I do my modifications to this, um, I will be putting an edge on it, of course, and then selling it off um and that's uh i think that's pretty much it there's not much more i gotta say about this ridiculously slicey blade um the tension when it's all the way you know open if you it's nice and strong up here i don't really feel like it's gonna go anywhere even if i do put a little bit of pressure if my thumb is halfway on the back of the knife and then halfway on the back of the spine there in that spot that's very comfortable to me but Really, this knife, I believe, is best used to be used in a little pinch grip because this is going to be a wonderful little slicing knife. Um, the blade shape, while I think it would have been wonderful if it was offered in something a little bit more, uh, 
I don't want to say practical because this is actually a pretty practical knife in the means of, you know, actually like cutting stuff. Uh, the opening method obviously is not typical and practical. Um, but in the ways of cutting, it's actually pretty decent because it's so thin and you know, it's, it's good. I don't have a whole lot of complaints about it. It's just, I don't know, this, this clip point, it just looks so... It's so foreign to me. And to a lot of other people, it's like, just whatever, not a big deal. But it would have been cool if it was maybe a simple drop point or even a little uh, worn cliff or sheep's cliff, whatever. Um, what else? Anything else that I could think of before we call it a day? Oh, you know what? These little grooves right here. This is their take on a... Uh, nail nick right it's only on the one side traditionally yeah I, I guess it is only on the one side but this has no pocket clip essentially meaning that this is an ambidextrous knife why isn't it on both sides it would offer just the slightest bit more traction and those little spots right there they are so ridiculously shallow and so easy to get gunked up that if you were to pull this out and slip and it comes back down, uh, you know, it can it can clip your finger pretty good or a side of it or something. But I wouldn't call this a, a beginner's knife, definitely a novice knife um, or, you know, just anybody who's well seasoned within the hobby that wants uh, a slip joint. But I personally believe that if it's not broken, it really shouldn't have been fixed. They tried to modernize a very successful and efficient nail nick design and created something that is slick and honestly a little unsafe. So just keep that in mind if this is a model that you've been wanting to check out because while it looks like I don't have much issue with actually like opening and closing this thing, and it really isn't that bad, but if you were to do this... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? If you were to do this absentmindedly, um, you know, you may slip. And if your hands are, fingers are sli uh, slick enough, yeah, it's just going to slip right out. So, uh, yeah, that's really my only, like, major, like, two major complaints. This, if it's going to be this shallow, at least do it on the other side to have double the traction. Or if it's just going to be on the one side, make sure it's deep enough. Uh, if you want it to keep it modern looking or maybe just not have done anything with it and done a traditional, uh, you know, nice and crisp nail nick to grab onto. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. So again, my goal with this thing, I'm going to completely customize it, clean it out, sharpen it, and then put it on an aft sale, 150 bucks. If anybody's interested, I will share with you guys the progress. If I have any of you guys on Instagram, go ahead and just check it out. And I'll, I post pictures and videos with metal music and whatever in the background. So whether you like it or not, go ahead and check it out. I definitely appreciate it. If you guys like this video, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you are subscribed, I most definitely appreciate all of you guys' support and your patience, of course. If you are not subscribed, consider subscribing because I have plenty more content coming your guys' way. And with that being said, have a wonderful rest of your day.